left a big impact on this program. I mean, it it changed. It brought up like his death brought us together even closer. You know what I'm saying? Than we was last year. That's why I'm saying like this year, this year will be for 22. I remember feeling like this whole year is going to be about Ty, and this whole year is going to be about how we honor him and how we carry him with us. My expectation for the team was high because I thought there was a lot of talent. What I wasn't sure about was how they were going to handle Ty's loss. It was six or seven or eight months beforehand, but you're in fall camp and his name is still coming up a lot. And he, the number 22 is very present around the facility and his very good friend Aaron Lowe made a point of saying, I'm wearing 22 this season to honor my teammate. Peaceful is definitely a word that comes to mind. Like we finally got to honor him because it was a long nine months of not feeling like we had done enough. That third quarter moment of loudness where everyone stood and cheered and it, it was a moment of like, he's here, he's with us. We can have a little bit more closure. The youth in Weber State territory. Brewer completing that pass to number 21, Solomon Enos. And by the way, just that there's maybe some cosmic force out there. That first play of the fourth quarter after they just honored Ty Jordan went for 22 yards. Utah fans, good afternoon and welcome inside of Rice-Eccles Stadium and homecoming here at the University of Utah. It's the Utes of the Washington State Cougars. Garantano steps, fires outside, intercepted by Clark Phillips. 15, 10, 5, it's a house call. it's a pick six, and it's a Utah win! It is certainly a great day to be a Ute and great to get that first Pac-12 win here at home. Did you talk to him that day? No, I had talked to him that Friday. He was eating and he was, Mama, I call you back, I'm eating. I said, okay, baby. He never called me back. Aaron Lowe was shot and killed last night at a house party in Salt Lake City. Hours after celebrating, the Utes went over Washington State. Devastating news for the Utah football program. I called Coach Shaw and he said, let me call you right back. And when he called me back, I could hear it in his voice before he, when he said, Mama, I knew he was finna tell me my child was dead. And that's what he said. He said he didn't make, mm. yeah. This has been the hardest two months of my life. I stayed in the bed that whole day. Didn't go anywhere, couldn't get out of bed, wouldn't get out of bed. I was just devastated. I mean, it was like reliving Ty all over again. They were two different situations, obviously, but the result was ultimately the same. Two young men who were good young men, great young men, beloved by friends, family, and teammates lost their lives. Aaron. I know you can hear us, and I want to say collectively that we love you. I'm truly glad. I don't know what would have happened had Utah not been on a bye week that week. The fact that they had the bye week that week at least gave them time to be able to exhale a little bit and breathe and grieve together. And I think the thing that helped them the most was Aaron's mother coming to town and speaking to the football team just days after her son was murdered and sending a message to the guys that it's okay to go play football and honor her son, honor Ty, because that's what they would have wanted to do. And what, what did you tell them? Mainly I wanted them to stay focused. You know, don't allow this to stop them. 
because Aaron wouldn't want them to stop. The Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum and the Southern California Trojans prepare to take on the Utes of Utah. This was a Utah football team that was still wobbly. You know, they hadn't found their footing yet. They had beat Wazoo, but then they had that horrific two weeks of dealing with Aaron's death. I just, I didn't know how they would play. And then the game began and they just started playing. Lee Flicker down the middle. He's got a man open in the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Turn it to give again. Thomas, second level. He's got the 30. There he goes! 10 5 touchdown! I kind of felt like everything that had built up for that week and a half after the tragedy. They kind of let out. They let out their frustration, they let out their anger, they let out their, their sadness, and they let out their, their joy, and they just went out there and played, and, and they played a great game. And now, fans, we ask you, Please turn your attention to the press box located on the west side and help us count down the official retiring of number 22 in honor of Aaron Lowe and Ty Jordan. Let's hear it, fans, for the families of Ty Jordan and Aaron Lowe. It was amazing to look up there and you seen Lowe sitting up there in the stands. For years to come, it'll be little kids want to know who is Jordan and who is Lo, and it'll be a story that they'll tell them. You know, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and it brought us together. It also brought the team together. You know, I feel like they have this bond, and it's like, if they're losing and they go back to the locker room, you better bet in the third quarter, it's on. Thomas straight in and Tavion Thomas, touchdown Utah. From the moment that the number 22 was retired, Utah's game has been on fire. I would honestly believe that there are 13 players on that field. Listen, yes, because some, some of the stuff that's been going on on that field, you know, I, I just, like, how, how did that happen? It was like they had extra players. It, it does. <laughs> it was like they had two extra players, I mean. It's just like they come out of nowhere. And just, yeah, and they've just been awesome. Covey's going to take it at about the 22-yard oh, line. Boy. Here he goes to the outside, Britton Covey. He's got the 30. He's got the 35, he's got the 40, up the sideline, 50, 45, 40, there he goes, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, 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 Brent Covey, 78 yards. And that will be the dagger this evening here at Rice Eccles Stadium. They did it for themselves, and they did it for their fallen teammate, Aaron Lowe. Every time I turn around where something's going on, it seems like a 22 is involved. I mean, Britt runs that punt back in the game. He catch, catches the thing at the 22. You know, we do a hype video the night before the game, and you look at the gas pump, and there's a 22 on that, and that was not staged. It just appeared. Like, things like that just happen all the time. And so the number 22, it's uh, got some kind of mystical, magical power about it, I guess, now. I don't know, but it, it's just, whenever I see it now, it's just never the same. It's family. It's community. It's it's happiness and that's what it was to Aaron and Ty. It was it was their life. It was what gave them life and they loved football so much. And I hope the 20, number 22 always reminds people that football is a game and it's fun and it's happy and it should bring so much joy to to life. I'm so grateful to them because they without knowing it had this incredible ability to bring a lot of people together. Their lives meant more than just who they were on the football field. I think the number 22, to me, most of all represents bringing people together and celebrating people that we love. As they say, 22% better. That everyone will just get 22% better each day. 
these last games, it's just like they've been awesome. Those guys is really they really playing some football. But what do you think they're making of all of this? We have to finish. I really feel like they feel like that, you know. It, it don't matter. We, we'll we'll go rest when when the season is over, you know. I think that there are 13 players on the field. <laughs> I, you know, I just that would only explain it.